Hello and welcome back to the Discraft Ledgestone Insurance Open from Lake Eureka. We've got round one back nine coverage Disc Golf Pro Tour on Jomez Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Ulibarri. <laughs> Going into the back nine, we have got a couple of scores over par. And then Macbeth sitting at four down. Gavin with a strong bounce back after a slow start. He's at two under par. But we're chasing some really good scores right here. But four under showing up on our front nine, that shows how difficult this course is. Normally that number is even lower on any other course, but Lake Eureka is a very challenging course. This whole event is a very challenging event. Hole 10, par three, 425 OB sponsor wall on the left side. And then there's water that's very long and really tough rough on the right. It's not OB, but it is tough in there. Some really good guardian trees here. You got to pick your line and hit it hard here to try to stay underneath those branches and get to the basket. Do you guys think that an over par score will cash at this tournament this year? Yes. Yeah, it might. We, we're going to have to see. Northwood black what we're going to go play the next two days is the hardest course we have ever played in tournament competition so it's it's 100 percent. i'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna say, say i'm gonna try no just to be the contrarian i'm gonna say you got to get even par i'm saying yes as well gavin turned over too quick and in the grass Macbeth making the height adjustment and this looks perfect paul made this look oh. so easy that I was next, mm. and I was like, as we watch it again, because it was so good. Drifting, never over drifted, perfect weight behind that. I mean, that's the tricky part. It's you turn it over, you're in the rough, you hyzered early, you're OB. So that just has to get perfectly flat, and he did mm. it so well. So I just was like, follow the leader, flip yeah. up to flat. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> What's going on with mine? A little leaky. Yeah. And then big jump, but stops uh, before the out-of-bounds line. And I was mind-blown. I was like, why didn't mine just do what his did? <laughs> and then I realized that it's tough. Yeah, it's you have a different thing. last name. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Look at this forehand drive. That's, that's, a, big, that's a big boy forehand. Yeah, that was a good one. I didn't, didn't want to go with Anheuser out of the hand because there was a slight headwind. So I just went flat and hope that it would have enough, and it, it basically did. did. Yeah, it did. Gavin yeah, trying to give it a little run. Hitting some high foliage. There it is for you, Paul. Oh, look at that. Good effort. Still in a bit of a bo uh, birdie drought right now. I need to pick one up soon. And that's a great putt after a great drive. That is a solid birdie to pick up. Especially after the short little whiffer on the last hole to be able to be like, no, that's that's just never going to happen again. Yeah. Bang. I'm, I've never putted circle. better than immediately after missing an 11-foot putt. I feel like that. <laughs> I, I can make any putt on the next shot after that. You really feel that way? Oh, yeah. That'll sharpen, that'll sharpen you. 11 feet is very short. It's like a kind of miss that's... <laughs> that you don't um like it doesn't hurt my confidence it just makes me go like what the it was yeah. like it didn't it wasn't hard it just missed and then it's like okay you better probably focus a little bit like a like a what the heck kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that that's exactly what i said probably <laughs> hole 11 par 3 300 ob all around the basket this one is Easy, but treacherous. And I don't think it's tall. We've got a, a tall basket on our drone flight, but I think this one is short in the in the real world. This must be added just as a joke by our editors. <laughs> the it's, width is really good. Yeah, distance is really good. Is this Hannah? No, flippier one. Okay. Macbeth was coming after me here going, let me show you how to throw a forehand on this hole. And then he parked it. And then I threw mine. He's like, if you would have thrown it higher, it would have been closer. And I was like, oh, you know, huge thank you to you, man. Yeah. Maybe you can see him in the background telling me. Gavin with the turnover backhand. 
Is this going to turn enough? Oh my gosh, right in the back corner, he is safe. That means he's going to be inside the circle button for birdie. Easiest hole on the course, 2.6 average. This is the only must get on the entire in the entire tournament. And I oh, ain't get had the distance that was really good. Agreed. And Gavin's not going to be must getting either. No harm, no foul. Just going to be a par for Yuli. At that point in the round, heavy metal music was beginning to play. Yeah, it, what the heck must be repeated many times in your head at this point. In Screamo. <laughs> yeah, water. <laughs> <laughs> Birdie for Nate and for Macbeth. Only two on the easy hole 11 onto the much more difficult 12. Yeah, the water tower. Hole 12, par three, 354. Totally blind to the player, but a much improved tee pad this year. Nice and flat, really a nice change. But you see it's an island green, basically. You've got to get around the water tower, but don't go too deep swing back left. If you miss the, the island, you're going to a drop zone where you're still blind and, and the basket's hiding behind that water tower. Yeah, this is a change that we've been asking for for several years to Nate Heinold, and he actually came through last year for the first time. Look at that shot. What I love about that shot is the height he gave it. He gives it so much height that he's able to stay so clear of the water tower. Yeah and then bring it in with the oh. soft landing. That's that's beautiful shot. We're gonna go with your destroyer. A little bit more low line, trying to get maybe a bit of a skip. And skip you get. Yeah, fancy oh. little move there. Oh my goodness. Very fancy. Gavin higher, wider, perhaps better, certainly better. Beautiful. Height. Yeah. Can be your friend. It is nice because if you, as long as you're double, yeah, look we at got that. That spicy red. Ooh, yeah. Beautiful. Almost identical. This has got a little bit more width, but the height was great, and you're going to nestle right there by Nate. Yeah, two buds hanging out there, two buds hanging out over there. Still hanging, talking. Chopping it up. Just cutting it up. Three in a row. Now get you back to two under par after the double bogey. So a couple players in the card with a purple score and a two under score. And that heavy metal music is just getting turned up. Yeah, that was heavy metal <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Heaviest metal you can get. Oh. Hate watching when your buddies not do his best. Yeah, this was an interesting round. I've been putting great all year, and then all of a sudden, there was it was like I was putting a 15-pound putter. And that happens sometimes. Hole 13, par 5, 1,080. One of the signature holes at this event, to be sure. This one 
has a pretty wide fairway, but you don't want any part of it. The best play is to stay next to the water for all three shots and play over the water every time. If you try to go up the fairway, there's a lot of trees that make that a very difficult proposition. Disc selection is so important here. If you get too far left, you're gonna pinch your second shot out of position and uh, that is gonna be fine. Ideally, you'd like to be to the right side of that tree to really open up the water second. This has got to go. Yeah, this is so safe. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> it was a terrible shot. This, I got fortunate there. I find this whole this drive very difficult because my head is just going, well, not too long, but really right, but not too short, but not too long. And I just always kind of do something like that. I need to be more committed and just rip it hard like this. Yeah. Oh, no. Even harder, though. <gasps> oh, no. It's... And that was crazy. I thought for sure he was in bounds because we saw it popped up. But I think it was a yeah. stick holding it up or something. And he oh, wow. was barely out of bounds. This was the shot that I had in my memory banks as being just perfect. Yeah. Committed, wide, up top. You're loving that spot. That's got to be... Yeah within 10 feet of perfect for you, right? Absolutely. The one thing that I think about on that one is stay clear of that tree. Because mm -hmm. I've hit that tree and then gone splash down USA in the water. And I'm trying to get really aggressive here from awkward footing. Super awkward footing. And, and you're, this is going to pull you out towards more of the water. So you have to almost early release it. Oh, I early released it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> But to, in order to throw that shot effectively, you have to somewhat early release it because the angle of your run-up takes you out into the middle of the lake. Yes, yeah, and I, I am, I, admittedly, I know nothing about throwing that shot effectively, but I do know uh, <laughs> that it's in the poison ivy now. Okay, Beth in a great spot now after his wide open second, all from the perfect drive. Switching discs there. Yeah, good try, wind. <laughs> Not happening today, though. Just want to keep this as close to the bank as you can, and that's that's great. And this is Gavin from the drop zone, so he's way up left looking at that tree-lined fairway, but this is so perfectly played, drifting Whoa. down right towards the water and it, opening up a bit of a play to the green. The, the drop zone is almost a double penalty. I mean, you're out of position and you have the penalty stroke. It is so hard to get back into position from that drop zone to get where you can throw that hyzer shot that you want to on your what will, what will be his fourth shot. But Gavin with a great shot there and a little pitch out for you. Yeah, I overdid it a little bit. Cut off my angle a little more than I should have. Paul with a nice shot into the circle. There is a power line here that you can use to gauge your height. You got to go under it or over it. Can't really, there it is. I decided to go over it. That will net a birdie. Eh, we don't know that yet. <laughs> okay, well that's, I'm going to go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt there. And this was a creative line, low, getting the anti-skip, and he's going to have a yeah. putt to save par from the drop zone, which is not something a lot of people have ever done. And that just showcases, I mean, how fantastic of that sh of a shot it was from the drop zone. He still had to work that low ceiling, awkward approach. Spike Heiser above the hole and rolling a bit to the edge of the circle. I mean, that's incredible. What a scramble. That, you're absolutely right. That is so rare. I've got the low ceiling from these branches. Got to pop this up, and I just didn't quite hit it. Mm. And that's going to be a bogey for me. Macbeth, <laughs> that was pushing all sorts of different places that shouldn't stay in, but that one does, and that'll be another birdie. And looky, looky, Macbeth is at eight under par. Wow. 
two sets of, well, actually that one set is not four birdies in a row, it's just three. You got that birdie on one, but still incredible disc golf right now being played by Macbeth. Hole 14, par four, lengthened to 850 feet. Obviously, you've got the water on the right side, the string line on the left side. This willow can kind of wreak havoc. If your drive is big, You your angle may be cut off. You'd like to get down and to the right on the drive to set up a huge hyzer that comes just inside this last big tree and tries to stick this green. If you go long, it starts to slope down and you actually end up out there in circle two more often than not. I don't know if I, I, I have never seen someone go long on this hole in two. It seems like a third shot type of mistake. Look at this beautiful drive. He stays Gosh. low. That is so good. Yeah, just picture perfect. So here's what I was thinking. I was thinking, Paul got low. I'm <laughs> going to get low like Paul. I don't ever run up like that. And then it netted this result. Oh, man. So, out of bounds early. I mean, yeah. I will give you credit. You're picking a good player to emulate, or at least attempt to emulate. That's legitimately what I thought. I was like, get low like him and then peer it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's really tough. Might have been going through uh, Gavin's mind as well as he, throw, as he throws a very similar shot to Macbeth. This can be scary if you don't have really good angle control, but thank goodness Nate Sexton has good angle control. Still scary. Oh my gosh. Another ring flash as he goes just long enough to hit the only tree that can kick him back in bounds. This is where this hole can get just devastating. And that is that is not a okay. no, that was safe. No kidding. Well, that's a very good result then for, for you there, Paul, because if that doesn't ever come back in bounds, that would be case in point of how this hole can get so devastating. It just tempts the player to play that wide hyzer and more often than not, they'd never come back in bounds and they get very little advance and they're also out of bounds with the extra stroke and a lost disc. Oh, absolutely. And oh, then sit and down. I don't have strokes to give back right here. So then the tires are completely flattened with only a handful of holes left. Incredible shot from Gavin. If you liked his, check out oh this my one. Gosh. I'm barely in bounds off the tee to pretty much parked for the birdie. And so that will be a bogey save. That's going to have to work for the birdie. This is going to be a bit low. Not going to see too many people miss high from where Macbeth was. That is a very scary green just past the basket. It really starts to slope away. But look at those two birdies from Gavin and Nate. Third hardest hole in the course. Surprising that so many people were able to pick up the birdie at 25 players. It seems higher than what you would imagine when you stand on this hole. Even after a perfect drive, you look at this approach and you're just thinking, man, after that great shot, I still have 450 to the pin. Yeah, it's a very, very well difficult done. par four. Hole 15, par three, it's 315 feet uphill. Line to the player, elevated basket. OB on the left and long and right, but it's uh, it's one of the more forgiving holes out at this Lake Eureka layout. Turnover backhand or forehand hyzer are kind of your shot options. There's that mandatory pull as well, I should mention. You're not allowed to throw the backhand hyzer wide. You have to stay on the left side like Gavin is doing. Yeah, even if that doesn't catch the outside edge of the tree, I don't know if that had quite enough. A 
It's a little heavy on the hyzer, but a lot of power. That's it. That is so hard to do. <laughs> that hyzer seems so difficult with that tree's width. Yeah, I thought that one was a little too much hyzer, but it turns out that's probably what I should have been doing all along. It, it got up there closer than I anticipated. This could be going out of bounds for Macbeth. He's going to need a tree hit. Oh my gosh, what am I talking about? There's zero fade on that thing. Yeah, it was a it was a flippy disc. He was worried about the turn being not enough, but it didn't really have any fade, just kind of a helicopter drop. He's outside circle one. And... Dees. Yeah. Just a dees. Dees. Pretty dees. Dees. Yeah. Come on, man. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, nice Great. butt. Thanks. Great birdie. Only birdie on the card. Oh. Dees? No, 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 no. no, no, no. In this game, uh -huh. preparation is everything. Success is not by accident. Because you know, the course plays no favorites. In this game, detail matters. Idio Sports. I disagree. I think the course does play favorites. Who do you think it's picking? Usually Macbeth. I feel like the course likes him. He's a good looking guy. He's good, good for the sport. This is my take. <laughs> if looks gave you extra strokes, whew, champion. Nate Sexton. <laughs> Am I right, buddy? I don't think so. I would, I'd give him a D's if I if I had, if I was forced to vote. I'd give him a D's. Uh, we're looking at a par four here. Low ceiling drive, out of bounds on the left. Mandatory pull. Keep you honest. Make you go left on the second shot. I'm going for a super low forehand, and this is the greatest one there's ever been. <laughs> but it hits that tree. Oh, that was gonna no. go. So far. Yeah. Feet further. Like a hundred of them. Gavin just going go to go with the air shot, turnover, keep it down the road. Also go and turn over, but that's early, and that's going to be in the shrubbery. Got a nice little bounce out. At least he's not yeah. buried in there, but it is not good. Of course, playing favorites again. And you are going roller with that heat. And very understable, and it's important because the OB has actually been brought up the hill quite a bit. In the years past, you had a little bit more space on that left side, so if you went with a stable roller to try to get more distance, you could potentially drift down the hill and be out of bounds. And I think these bushes, with the construction of this little gravel road, these bushes have been trimmed back significantly as well, where Paul actually has kind of room to swing here, and he delivers just a fantastic standstill forehand from oh an awkward lock. Oh, my gosh. Line. Wow. And you cannot see the basket on this hole unless you throw a roller that goes nearly 550. So... No matter where you're standing, you're just looking at these trees and judging the distance based on what you can see with them. And it, it's always difficult to get that distance right on your approach. I was really frustrated with that effort, letting the disappointment of hitting that tree get to me and, and through a, a substandard shot. Gavin. Oh, that was interesting. I did not realize it got that much air breaks with the tree. Yeah, that thing was pushing potent. I don't think it was going to go out of bounds long, but it was going to be quite a bit down the hill. And if you're going to miss in one direction, you want to miss long on this hole so you can have that safe, friendly uphill putt. 
I don't want any butt at this time I like in the a, round. I like a 75 footer myself. Eat it. Oh. Oh. I thought you were foreshadowing. Please, 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 please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just taking you through the mental battle I was going right there. I That's... walked up to you right after that, and you and you said, "Well, you you know you're playing bad. You hear how loud they cheered for that." <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And Gavin clips the tree. Must have thought he had room to clear it. He did not, and it bounces him right, taking away his birdie chance. So of course, gave him an opportunity with the tree hit, but it also took it away with the same tree. And Macbeth out of position, birdie bringing him to nine under, just casually playing bogey free, just. Phenomenal disc golf, as he does when the course likes him more than anyone else out there. He's so handsome. <laughs> Hole 17, par 3, 310, Island Green. If you miss it, you're going to a drop zone that's about 140, 150 to the pin. It's a little rectangular shape here. You just got to get your weight right. Backhand or forehand does not matter. There's no real advantage to either shot. Unless you're handsome. <laughs> and then it doesn't matter. That's the point I'm trying to tell you right now. <laughs> Macbeth leaking a little left, but that's going to put the brakes on. As it always does it, for Sir Paul Macbeth. Mm hmm. Of Virginia Ham. Well, I don't know, guys. I mean, do you remember a little thing called the World Championships and an oh. island hole and a Paul Macbeth's disc not putting the brakes on? I mean,. That's true. He deals with it too, guys. He's Oh, you didn't win your sixth world championship. Look at this fall of flight. Oh, what, what a beautiful. shot. <laughs> what a shot from the young man. Beautiful. Just perfect. Yeah, just the most standard Nate Sex and Firebird hold there has ever been created. Were you ever worried? When I when mine left my hand, I thought I was cannonballing for sure. No, not after. I'm worried before I release it, but once it comes out of my hand, I got nothing to worry about. Gotcha. <laughs> I just tell myself, throw this firm. If it comes out with a little bit on it, I know, I know we're home. You guys made a heart. It's beautiful. We discussed that before we threw. We said so yeah. we throw this well enough. You know they're going to follow. You know it's going to look like a heart. You know germ, germs are romantic. He'll mention it. So let's fist bump that because that's a, that's a plan perfectly achieved. As Gavin gets that lifted too high, nearly got a fantastic kick off the banners to maybe find his way back in, but not to be. Here is that drop zone. And this is kind of short. Yeah. Gavin's been bogey free since the, uh, the early troubles he had on two and three and He's going to take his first bogey since the beginning of the round now here on hole 17. And Macbeth, 10, 10 under. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Double that digits. That is so good. It's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Gavin, yeah, ooh. You're right, though, man. That is a super tester to save the bogey. What did you say there? I was just making sure he went first since I was the CCP. He said, yeah, he said something like, get out of my way. And I said, all right, Mr. Speed 13. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I moved off. I love it. <laughs> Hole 18, par four, 711 feet. This one's got OB left. This little concrete structure is casual relief. So you could play it from in there or you could remove it backwards uh, as shown by the white paint around it. There's a couple places like that on this course. Second shot's really the tougher shot here because you've got all these trees that are kind of low ceiling. You've got this increasingly sloped fairway and obviously the water is pretty close to the basket. And Macbeth told me he lost his favorite roller disc. So the roller is just not mm. really a play he's going for at the moment. Yeah, that, oh, know. he lost one disc. <laughs> Try losing your whole bag, buddy. Oh wait, then he shot ten ninety at the memorial. Never mind. Go ahead, Germ. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, you're losing a roller disc. It's just got a. It's got a special bite to it. That's just a little bit tougher to take than losing a normal distance driver. Being in tune with your roller is such an important stability. 
And if you try to replace that with another disc that's the same name, it, it might not be the exact same flight. It's a really good point. This is my sidewinder. A little bit too much uphill, but I got a nice place to rest. A bench. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I like how you see the positive. Yeah. Even in that shot. Gavin going cut roller. This looks like this could be heading towards that bunker structure. Or is it on? Oh, no. It misses it. And. That's going to be out of bounds, but he's going to actually be wide open from there to go out over the water for the approach. I don't know if he is a little bit injured or if that's just his game, but he said multiple times, I, I'm not throwing forehands. So huh. of any kind of distance. Yeah, we saw him last week at the preserve throw a backhand on hole 13, which is very heavy forehand friendly on that one. And we saw him do it out here on hole 11. Really awkward run up to get around that, that bench and I'm cursing the bench's name right now because I was not able to keep the, the nose down how I needed to. You but, son of a bench, he yeah. said did, out loud. Did you get a seat? Uh, I think I was too caught up in the heat of battle. All right. This, this is too hot. Sit, sit, sit. Yeah, that does, oh my gosh. Two of them that are gonna be hard to retrieve. Uh, not the finish Gavin was looking for in 17, 18, doing so much to get back to four under par. And now he's going to, he's looking at even or one down. Now, Paul hits that tree, but it's good that he hit it on the right side, not the left side. He hits it on the left side. You're going to be in the water over there with Gav. Breaks. Nice round. Mm hmm. Just outside circle two here. Oh my gosh. No. Give so it close. to him. On, first on 16, now on 18. I had had enough. I checked out. And solid back nine, Nate. Just the one bogey ending up shooting four under. Oh, and he just he makes the putt to stay at two under par. It's a great putt for Gavin. Only took him three shots, but two OBs netting him a bogey. Macbeth, a bogey-free 10 under par. You don't see many bogey-free rounds out here. This was a good day to do it. Not too much wind. We've played much windier days out at this course that make it so, so difficult. I believe there were only two bogey-free rounds on the course. And there you have it. Macbeth with a dominant 10 under, at least on this card. I came second at four. Gavin, two. And Paul Ulibarri, even. Fire emojis, though, not for Macbeth. It's Waisaki and Gibson, 11 under today. Three tens, including Chris Dickerson and the young gun, Cole Radalin out of Oregon, I think just 16 years old. So mm -hmm. some great chances for him to get some camera time and see how he responds. Like we said, we're moving over to Northwood Black, one of the hardest courses we have ever seen on, in professional disc golf. Two straight days in the deep woods, trying to shape shots on extremely demanding par fours and fives. Come on back. If you're in the Founders Club, we know you're going to be there. The rest of you, get in the club. At least come watch the video. It's going to be an incredible battle down the stretch here at the Ledgestone, Discraft Ledgestone Insurance Open.